Hi, my name is Olga Smith. I'm an art historian. As an art historian, I work with images and I'm interested in the effect of images on our perception of climate change. Human beings are essentially visual creatures. We receive most of the information about the world visually and we respond to visual information much better than any other type of data. The problem with climate change, though, is that you cannot really see it. For most of us, the effect brought upon the acceleration of anthropogenic change are largely invisible. Most of us cannot experience at first hand the melting of the ice in the Antarctica, the heating of the ocean or retreat of the glaciers. In addition, it can be hard to relate information presented in abstract terms, such as charts or graphs that measure, for example, the very important atmospheric CO2 emissions. As a result, it can be difficult to grasp the effect of climate change in concrete terms. For some, absence of visual information can even be interpreted as absence of evidence and can lead people to contradict the scientific consensus on climate change. And this is why visualizing climate change is very important as it can help increase public awareness of the issue and ultimately motivate implementation of policies and controls that are now urgently needed. But is there evidence that images can really change the way we look at nature? Well, yes, and there are examples in art history that demonstrate that images can empower conservation and environmental protection. One example that I can think of is the work of the 19th century American photographers such as Colton Watkins, William Henry Jackson, and later on Ansel Adams. Colton Watkins, for example, traveled within the territory we now call Yosemite National Park, producing photographs that captured the unique landscape in a way that found deep resident resonance with general public. The images then reached the government and helped to give Yosemite the status of a national park and encouraged the development of the environmentalist movement. Today, photographers who work within the genre of environmental photography continue to make images of natural environments for the purpose of prom promoting environmental sustainability. But I think that images made by artists do more than just provide visual information. They affect us emotionally by stimulating our imagination. And I'd like to explain how by focusing on one aspect of my current research project. In this project, I study the images of landscapes in contemporary art, which I approach as a representation of the relationship between humans and nature that address dependencies of animate and inanimate worlds in the age of the Anthropocene. I am especially interested in the newest forms of technology that artists use to create such images, such as digital photography, video and computer animation. I discovered that even though such works are really contemporary in their use of technology and subject matter, they rely on a mode of address that has been around for several centuries the aesthetic category of sublime. We commonly use the word sublime to describe something that is really good, enjoyable or beautiful. But in the 18th century, when this term was originally developed, sublime related to the most extreme range of human emotions, as it combined confusion and astonishment, intimidation and awe, terror with excitement. In the original context, both in philosophy and in landscape, pa landscape painting, sublime was designed to describe the experience of the wonders of nature, such as towering mountains, waterfalls and starry skies. This legacy, I believe, is assimilated and reconfigured in contemporary visualizations of landscapes. These images often produce a visceral experience of being overpowered which corresponds to the idea that sublime is a force that leads us, the human subject, to grasp the limits of our power. There is in such images a renewed emphasis on nature as unknowable and uncontrollable power that encourages us to reassess the place of the human in the natural order. To visualize climate change then is to visually represent current 
as well as future ecological realities. And this is why I believe that study of such images is very important and it can contribute to finding a humanities-led solutions to current environmental predicaments.